Hi folks, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Kat. I'm a licensed registered dietitian nutritionist and online nutrition coach. I specialize in sports nutrition, gut health, and prenatal nutrition. Overall, nutrition coaching around practices that support physical, mental, social, and emotional well-being. In today's video, I am super excited to give you another interview talking about someone's experience within Beachbody and the To Be Mindset. This is a To Be Mindset week. In the first video, I went over the To Be Mindset and shared some of my concerns around it. And then the previous video, we heard from Lily talking about her experience with Beachbody and the To Be Mindset. And now in today's video, we are doing another interview. Now today's interview is with Melissa. I am super excited. I was super excited when she reached out to me because she is actually a registered dietitian as well. And this is a really important point that I feel like we don't talk about a whole lot within the anti-MLM community of just talking about how there's this kind of thought that people aren't very educated or very smart if they join an MLM. And I've I've heard so many anti-MLM creators talk about how like that's just not true. But in a lot of like Facebook groups that I'm in, I'm still kind of seeing that kind of narrative. When in reality, these companies can be very manipulative and you always look back at your, it's helpful to look back at like when did that person start? And typically what we find out is that they weren't at the very best place in their life. When I was actively involved in one, I was not at the best place in my life. And you hear this kind of story, people's experiences again and again. And in the one that I was in, in particular, there are so many medical professionals, health professionals, they were doctors, they were other registered dietitians, they were pharmacists, there were nurses, there were so many within that field in nutrition related MLMs and there still are. And so I think this is really important to kind of continue talking about how that happens. So Melissa is actually a registered dietitian who is transitioning into a weight inclusive and health at every size approach. And she is working towards her certification in intuitive eating counseling. And so throughout this interview, you'll get a chance to kind of hear kind of what the thought process was before and kind of just the overall atmosphere that kept her within Beachbody and then kind of how that transition started to happen, which I think is amazing and I just feel like we need to talk about how many health professionals are in these nutrition related MLMs like I mentioned, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, registered dietitians, we need to talk about it. So I hope you enjoy this video and I would love to hear your thoughts. Let's go. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on this channel. I am actually in the midst of going through um, more of the to be mindset and just kind of diving deeper into all of that to review mm -hmm. and talk about. And so I'm really glad that we got connected over Good. on Instagram. And um, I know you had mentioned in the, the DM that you were a discount coach for a while and just mm -hmm. With your background, I I, I want, don't want to give everything away. I want you to share. So can we start with just you sharing a little bit about yourself, your background, and kind of how you got started in Beachbody? Okay, so um, I've been you know on a diet probably since I'm eight years old. You know, when I was eight, I was told by a doctor I was morbidly obese based on whatever my BMI was at the time. So it was Slim Fast, Weight Watchers. You know, it was always, my parents both dieted all the time. It was just something that was just normal to me, this to be in that world that I never really thought. And I was bullied as a kid. So it was, it was something that I was always consciously working on losing weight. And I've done everything. I've read every book. Um, I ended up losing weight as a young adult because I started smoking and drinking and not eating. So I was replacing whatever I was using the food for apparently for that. And um, so people noticed and said, wow, you look amazing. And I knew, I was like, I can't recommend this, <laughs> you know, not, right. not a good plan. So um, I ended up going into school and learning, studying dietetics and, and, and eventually became a registered dietitian. At the same time, always dieting, always trying the next new thing. And thankfully, um, 
got rid of those other habits. You know, it's been a very long time now. I, I don't do those things anymore. Good. So, um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and um, so, you know, I, I studied all, all that and I, you know, became a dietitian, but still felt so self-conscious about my appearance. I still felt like I wasn't the look, you know, who would want me to help them. And I kind of shied away from going into what I really wanted to do, which was help people. Mm-hmm. And um, I went into the food service end of, 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 of uh, nutrition. So okay. I, I've been, I, was, I have been working in that for about 13 years. Okay. Um, recently had to leave because of pandemic. I need to be home now with my son. Was uh, it like at a hospital or like a um, with, um, living food, uh, school food? School I worked with okay. um, public school um, food systems. Okay. I got so you. just supervising, you know, staff doing a lot of the personnel mm-hmm. payroll kind of things, ordering and not really having any input as far as menus or, or any kind of things like that. So right. it wasn't what I wanted, but I felt like I, that was what I had to offer. So anyway, I had taken a year off. My son was born. I had, you know, gained weight, obviously, of having been pregnant and then, you know, having a little trouble now because I have a young child. I can't go to the gym, do the things that I used to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and a friend of mine had been doing beach body. She was not a coach. And um, I knew she she had four kids at the time. I think she, she has six now. Okay. So I said, well, if she can do it, then I could do it. And she had, you know, showing her results on Facebook, even though she wasn't a coach. And I, I said, what are you doing? And she hooked me up with her coach, who I, I did not know okay. um, at all. Gotcha. But I had already like, you know, then done, you know, my own research and said, mm-hmm. yeah, sign me up. You know, she didn't even have to give me any kind of like spiel. I just said, yeah, I'm in, you know. And um, so I started and I did three rounds of 21 Day Fix, you know, with the portion containers. And mm-hmm. um, I really struggled with that because it seems so um, restrictive to me. Yeah. And, um, it kind of did at least raise my awareness as far as that I wasn't really incorporating certain food groups because coming from the background that I had, I did still have like unconsciously restricted certain things. So in a way having the portion containers helped me just like to make sure I was getting all those things in, Mm -hmm. but the amounts to me weren't enough. And, you know, I saw everybody else sharing and doing it and I was like, why can't I do this? I can't do it. But I, you know, so I kind of tried and I would fall off and it was always like that constant shame and beating myself up. It was really not um, sustainable for me, you know, and so I, I kind of like couldn't keep up with it. So when they first started talking about to be mindset was something that was coming out. Oh, and in the meantime, I became a coach because, you know, the discount. I started in November of 2014 and I became a coach in March of 2015. So a few months in, I was in all the challenge groups. I was posting my workouts and, you know, my coach said, hey, you know, whatever. And at that time, the friend who had originally referred me had become a coach herself. So since she was somebody that was actually a friend, I said, oh, well, she's doing it. You know, I could do it. And I'm just doing the discount. Right. So um, but I did. I still had that thing where I wanted to help people, you know, and I had lost at this point now 20 pounds. It was noticeable. So people, I would share, you know, my before and afters and, you know, people wanted to know what I was doing. But I never really was able to get people to do what I was doing. You know, like they would they always wanted something um, even more restrictive. They're like. You know, like, oh, you're only doing a 30 minute workout. You're going to be doing an hour, you know, and I was just like, no, no, it's it's just 30 minutes a day, you know, whatever. And so, you know, I would tell people about it. People would be like, oh, it's the shake. So let me just do the shake and then I'll lose the weight. And of course, that wasn't what it was that was working for me. So they would do that and not be able to, you know, achieve what they were looking for and then just fall off. So I never really had like a team or anything like that. But I just continue because I'm like, I was like a product, you know, they're really good at like, yeah, doing, yeah. And they're really good at like the FOMO, like really good. Like it's like this new thing is coming out. Everybody's got to have it. And when you're a coach, you get exclusive early access and you can sign up. You could be in a group with the the super trainer. Like you could, mm-hmm. you know, so it was like whatever new thing came out, except for like the dance stuff. Cause I was not into that, but any, anything else I was like, yep, sign me up. I'm into it. You know? So like, you know, keeping the discount for me was important because I wanted to do all the things. Mm-hmm. So when they said to be mindset that it was coming from a registered dietitian mm-hmm. that she had been overweight as a child, um, I really related to her personal story. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, I mean, the only difference is that she's like 
a Beverly Hills million dollar dietitian and here I am doing school food, you know, like, but, um, you know, I felt like I related to her. Mm -hmm. So I signed up as soon as that became available and they had like early access with that and like a coach test group where she would like kind of come into it and, and give more background and stuff. So um, I had been at that time uh, doing it a couple of years and I was stuck at a plateau, you know, and I just couldn't seem to budge it. So like once I started to be, I, I lost like 15 pounds and I was like, well, you know, this is what I was looking for. So I started sharing about that a lot too. And, um, you know, so like it had been May, 2018 is when it came out. Okay. So I, I had been very, um, like, I would say I was to be for life. You know, that's, that was my, you know, like she says bunny for life. So that was me, you know, and, and, and the people in my groups that I, you know, other fellow coaches, people that were in my groups that, that I was a part of, like, it didn't really catch on with them as much. Um, I guess because it, it seems very, um, it's not very, it's not as prescriptive, I guess. Structured. Structured. Yeah. You know, so people were like, well, what is it really? You know, and like, yeah. but uh-huh. it worked until it didn't work, you know, so, yeah. you know, and it's in the last year, I guess, that I started to question like, um, but isn't this a diet? Like we're saying it's not a diet, but I still feel like there's a lot of rules. You're weighing yourself daily. Every day. Every day. Yeah. And I was somebody who was totally, I mean, I did Weight Watchers for years and I stopped doing Weight Watchers because I didn't even want to weigh in once a week. And I hated that that was one of the requirements. And now here I am weighing myself every day. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really kind of going back. I don't want to, you know, go back to the, to the very beginning, but it's really important to make note that there are so many, and this is for viewers. um, If you're not aware, there are so many different places that dietitians can go into. Like after you have your training, you can you can focus in research, you can focus in just clinical nutrition, you can do more, um, like even when I was in my residency or internship portion, we were in the, across the capital um, in Kansas, right? So like working on actual like food related government stuff. <laughs> and then, um, and in those positions, or even if you're working at an assisted living place, like making sure all of the residents are, are getting, you know, eating, right. Um, for that older age, geriatric population, those are not the same thing as like the coaching and the counseling and everything. And so if that, if that is your like whole life and career, the coaching side and aspect of that and implementation, like that is a specific place that dietitians can also focus in on. And so I just wanted to make that very clear because you had like a separate focus. And so it's completely understandable to kind of get in to that kind of uh, situation and that kind of program. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and really the where I did my internship was a, f- a focus on public health nutrition. Okay. And that's really what I love too, you know, and doing, um, doing rotations with, um, you know, um, HIV positive populations or, or mm-hmm. in, um, you know, food banks and, and things like I was, so it wasn't like the coaching aspect of like, yeah, like I felt very coaching. drawn to that too. And that yeah. that's kind of like what led me back even to where I'm at now is because of like the social justice issues that were coming mm-hmm. up. And I just felt like, I'm like, this is, this is really a lot. There's a lot of white supremacy going on here. Right. And it was yeah. making me so much to do related to new. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and I'm like with the, with the diet culture itself, you know, and yes. like, and just the people I was following and the people that were in my groups is there was a lot of, um, political the the political mindset of some of the group that I was a part of was like very far from where I was and I just didn't feel comfortable with that anymore either and like uh-huh. I was I was kind of like unfollowing everybody because I'm like they're I don't agree with and and like in a way that to like it wasn't even like we could have a difference of opinion it was just like no like I can't even that's a, an interesting that. point because I was hearing from a lot of different companies about how our different uplines saying like 
don't post about your politics and don't talk about this. And the whole idea when you're in MLM is just to see everybody as potential clients or even as clients, not wanting to upset them or anything. Yeah. And I understand that, but at the same time, that's not something that like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't want to be working with people who, you know, don't right. have the same, you know, issues around social justice that we need to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Um, and because, need, like, you know, it was such yeah. a heated, like political climate that people just couldn't keep it quiet anymore, I guess. Right. Like, it was and like, it's okay to talk right. about it. It's <laughs> okay to post about it. It's okay to lose some people. Um, yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, always fine with that. <laughs> so as these things all started to come together and then like, as far as with the 2B and me starting to lose a little bit of, you know, it started out like you're in this coach test group, then it's released to the customers and you could, you could help them now. Like you, you've learned it. Now you're applying it to your life. You're helping them with it. And that made sense. And then it's like, wait, we're going to do a certification. So you can actually get certified as a mentor in this program. And then you'll have even more like knowledge, you know, and then you'll you'll be able to, to even more promote it or, or, and you know, there's a maintenance fee for this, you know, of course it's right. like it was $8 a month, I think at the time. And there was an exclusive Facebook group associated with, there was exclusive content that was released to us as mentors that we had that customers wouldn't have, like to give you like the upper hand or whatever, like a, a leg up on the information. And, you know, I guess that didn't really go as well as they thought it would, because then they said, well, now everybody's going to get access to this. Now it's $20 a month and, you know, you're going to actually have both programs. Okay. And I was like, it didn't make sense to me, you know? Yeah. It's interesting that any kind of training or certification or anything would continuously like, and, and it's not the same thing as like actually being licensed in a state and needing to pay the mm -hmm. licensure board. Right. Um, if you do any kind of other kind of certification, even for something like coaching, like with precision nutrition or any of the other um, places, like it's one time, yeah. <laughs> that's it. And you're not licensed, but uh, it's just a one-time payment. Right. And, and for me, you know, being registered and being that, you know, I'm not working so much in the field where I had access to a lot of community um, continuing ed. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you're working in a hospital setting, like you have a lot of different things. Yeah. Where you can do. And so I always had to do it on my own. So then I said, well, it was, it was created by an RD. I actually DM'd Alana and I asked, is this going to count towards CPU? And she said, yes. Oh, okay. So I'm like, all right. So then it's worth my investing. And of course, it wasn't, you know, oh. and <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so yeah, I'm like, okay, but I have this knowledge and I can help people. And like that too, you know, I tried running groups that were specific to to be, and I got people that were interested, but again, it was sort of like, not, it didn't catch on because people mm -hmm. were like, it can't just be that, you know? Um, so I never really was able to coach anybody through this program. That's interesting. Because, that. yeah, I mean, even like precision nutrition, that's like 15 continuing education credits and mm -hmm. for the coaching aspect. Yeah. 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 It was so. like a $90, $99, I think, for that. And then wow. and then paying monthly to, to keep this whatever, you know, mm -hmm. cert certificate. And now, like, it's kind of just made into this umbrella thing and this monthly membership thing that, you know, contains both programs, which I feel are so yeah. like, not really like together. And then, you know, the exclusive content after a while, it started to get, you know, do I really need this, you know, and, and um, I just, you know, I follow Alana on social media and her like, like where I related to her so much in the beginning, like I felt like she was really trying to get TikTok famous and doing all these like catchy little like dance videos. And it's just not like my thing at all. And I was like, mm, I'm not really into that. And then a lot of the Beachbody trainers promote these diet bets and like, like um, you, challenges. It's like, like a separate, to lose. yeah, but it's like a separate company um, where you pay, it's like an app and it's $35 and you bet that you're going to lose 4% of your body weight by the end of the month. So I, you know, all these other trainers would do like autumn and people were, I would expect that from, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm never doing that. And then Alana starts promoting it. And I was like, oh, no. 
at all. And she would push it and push it and do all these Instagram. Every time she went live on Instagram, it was to promote this diet bed thing. So of course, who signed up for it like three times and never got their money back? Because it's like, when you lose your weight, you split the pot at the end of the month and, yeah. you know, you get your money back and never, it never worked. And I'm, I'm just like, why do I keep doing this? Like, this is so, and then you would see like in this app, people would be like doing kinds of extreme things because now it's two days before the last weigh in and you're still 0.2 above what your 4% is. So now it's like, I'm not eating or I'm just going to drink water and like, you know, exactly. or do a three day refresh and all this stuff. And yes. I'm just like, I don't want, this is exactly what I don't want to be doing. I've done this my whole life. And for that number at the end of the month and say, what, I'm going to get $35 back. I didn't have to put the $35 in to begin with. And then I'd be ahead of the game. Right. So right. that's it. That's it. I was thinking, like, when you said that, what are people going to do if they are trying to achieve that? They're going to do anything necessary. Right. It's and not then, you know, like it, not was, it was very toxic. Like the, 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 the banter that was going on in these, um, mm -hmm. in the app, it's like a separate app, but it has nothing to do with Beachbody, but for some reason, a lot of them promote it. Mm -hmm. And so there must be some connection there, but I haven't figured that out. And then, um, in her Facebook group, you know, that was the exclusive group for the mentors or whatever, like they're all talking about it too, because they're doing it. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. it, it just didn't feel right anymore and i'm just like i don't i really don't think i want to do this and it was like i was just about it was january and i was about to sign up for another one of these things even though i know they don't work i tried them enough times to tell you they didn't work um and then some you know i started seeing like one of the coaches that i was following promoting intuitive eating and i had heard of it and i always said oh that can't be a thing like how could that you know um and so I started following that and like she's offering a class in it and I'm like great you know <laughs> I could do this and this like I didn't realize that you can't you know so uh -huh. but at the same time which you know there was a plan I guess because at the same time I said well I need continuing ed credits and I know this isn't going to do it I signed up for the actual intuitive eating um class you know through Evelyn Triboli you know at <laughs> oh man that is such a good <laughs> and so doing that at the same time I was like mm, no like that's not not it's she's not teaching intuitive eating at no. all and I realized what she is teaching because I, my experience of doing so many things um the the life coach school I don't know if you if you follow that at all like um there's so many yeah there's um the life coach school though, I think it's Brooke. Oh, that's what and she trained this woman that does like this losing a hundred pounds podcast or whatever. And I did her program at one time and um, it was like 300 something dollars and they do all this stuff about thought work and these models, you're going to write out all this stuff. And like, that's exactly what she's teaching in this intuitive uh, exactly you know like i'm like so she's part it, of that brandy she was trained by the same person that trained this person and then this is their this is their blueprint and they just you know and, and it applies to every area of your life you know like mm -hmm. whether it's a business you know coaching or if it's weight loss it's it's all about your thoughts right so it's just like you just mm -hmm. think things and then you don't think them and i'm just like yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Not intuitive. laughs> eating. yeah. Um, yeah, she's still selling a diet. And I mean, I'm still digging in with the to be mindset and everything, but it's just the fact that there is that weighing daily. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that scares a lot of people. Um, and, and yeah. has people hyper focus on their weight when you could have weight fluctuations daily for so many reasons. And right. Yeah, as long as you're doing things that support your physical health and mental and social and emotional well-being, then your body will be at an appropriate weight for mm -hmm. you, right? So mm -hmm. what was really the thing that made you start seeing the light of start questioning things before kind of stepping away? Well, just because like, you know, it kept being like this another thing you have to sign up for, you know, like mm -hmm. once you, you buy the two of your mindset program, the actual program, the 41 videos and the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the recipes and all that, it's like you have it for life. So, but where's where's the money? Who's making money off that? So it's like now you have to pay this monthly thing just because you know to keep you in it. So like, you know, that I started to question a little bit. And then um, 
the fact that like I did lose the 15 pounds in the beginning where I thought I broke this plateau, but I still was fixated on it was never enough. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, having to go on the scale every day and like they always say like, you're either losing or you're learning, right? So it's like, don't beat yourself up. You're going to learn from it. But it's like, but if I, if I, what do I need to learn from this? Like how, and, and then it starts to become like, you're scrutinizing, like you get a track, there's a tracker. It doesn't come spiral bound. I actually had paid to do this. And you write down every day, like your weight, how much do you lose? How many hours do you sleep? How much water do you drink? And then it's like, now you got to go through this and figure out, well, I went up point two. So why is that is, oh, it's because I didn't poop today because poop is one of the things you check off too. There's like a poop emoji on the bottom. <laughs> I have it. I just opened it. I have the PPL. <laughs> so okay. it's like, oh, and then like, you could kind of justify things in a way. And then you can also, you can, you can it, I've gone both ways. There's ways where I've totally justified it and said, oh, what's this? It's no big deal. And then there's times when, you know, being on a diet bet, let's say I, I'd be like, oh, well, this is wrong. I need to redo all this. You know, I'm not eating enough vegetables or I'm not drinking enough water. Or like, you know, like every day, like going flipping and being like, is it this, is it that, you know, hyper-focused, you know, where it's supposed to be a freedom, you know, and, and it was in a way that you didn't have to measure things. But what I was realizing too was um, it's it's really tricking your body. Like now that I'm studying the intuitive eating piece and like really being in touch with your hunger, when you're drinking like six 30 ounce bottles of water, you know, like in a day, you're not in touch with your hunger, you know, and that's always, you have to drink water first before anything. Yeah. And then filling up on veggies that yeah. are very high fiber Mm-hmm. I mean, and I love vegetables. Even when I was a kid, I was a vegetable eater. You know, I like, I like it all, you know, so like, mm-hmm. I love cauliflower. I love Brussels sprouts. They're like trendy now too, you know, so I'm, I'm into it, but I was bloated all the time, you know, and now I realized because those are like, you know, cruciferous vegetables, yeah. you know, and that's really, you know, cat, she pushes a lot of cabbage, a lot of, a lot of um, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, all those things where it's like, of course, you're going to feel full all the time, you know, like, mm-hmm. and, and, and potentially not eating enough, right? If, if you're just having that first before any other food, any, right. Animal. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, and I would go around with like huge bags of, of um, cherry tomatoes and, and bell peppers and just like, you know, snacking on them because I don't want to, you know, eat yeah. something silly, like, you know, she does try to put a more positive spin on some things. Like it's like a, it's a diet it's diet. Silly. Like it's <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> when people say like, uh, there's a video, I think it's on college humor or something. It was from several years ago, but it was talking about like diet racism, like for microaggressions and everything. So like mm-hmm. a diet version of it, but mm-hmm. it's still fully terrible. Um, a diet diet. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 And I think it's also really important to, to make note for viewers that intuitive eating, like part of the foundation or the, the structure, they still talk about gentle nutrition. They still yeah. talk about eating in a way that supports our physical health. And so mm-hmm. it's not that we're saying that, you know, not to eat or like those vegetables and not to worry yeah. about that, not right. to think about that, but it's just in a less kind of prescriptive way and right. more so using learning how to use your body as far as that intake and um it's a dynamic interplay of the instinct and more of like what you want to eat but also rational thought um it's not just by acting without thinking um into mm-hmm. eating and so uh yeah <laughs> i just wanted to make that clear uh, yes. that we're not against vegetables or oh, anything not at all. I, but what i realized was maybe i can't have all of those in the same day, you know, yeah. like if I, have five, if I have cauliflower, Brussels sprouts and cabbage all in the same meal, let's say, or, or five times a day, I have to kind of break them up and, and, and kind of yes. also incorporate other types. And I like them all, like I said, so that's easy for mm-hmm. me. You know, like, I know that's a sticking part with some people too. They just don't like vegetables. They don't like to drink water. Like those weren't right. barriers to me because I, I like them, you know, and, and I like to cook and I like to try different recipes and stuff like that. So that, mm-hmm. that was appealing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, in the writing things down, you know, I came from Weight Watchers. That's, you know, I, I felt at least other kind of worms. alleys of numbers other than my weight, you know, of course I had to keep mm-hmm. count, count of that and, and the water bottles that I drank. But mm-hmm. as far as the food went, I didn't have to put cups or ounces or anything. And so like, I felt like that was free. Yeah. Did you ever have, when you were kind of stepping away, did you have your like friends in the community or like uplines or anything kind of ostracize you or anything did they even know right <laughs> like no, I, I think people really don't even realize because i think everybody's like kind of in their own thing you know like i, I you're I not kind like of, actively building the team and stuff right i'm yeah. not i'm not posting you know as like i was i was doing stories of my workouts and like and posting mm-hmm. like before and after is like i'm like and now i'm so like I feel so guilty about all the times I shared stuff like that, you know, like, I mean, people would always say, Oh, you're so inspiring. It's amazing. And there would be one or two people like when I'd put up a picture of myself when I was, you know, at my heaviest in my, my teens and be like, Oh, but you were so pretty then. And I I couldn't hear it, you know, like, because I felt like, Oh, it's like that. You're just a pretty face kind of thing, but they really meant they're like, you're beautiful either way, you know, but I couldn't see that. And like, Mm -hmm. like I can now, you know what I mean? Like, and, 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 you know, my feed was so full of everybody sharing, um, you know, before and afters, you know, I I had to really um, cut, cut that down a lot, you know, because it it was too much, you know, to see it all the time, you know, but it was normal because that was all I saw for absolutely years. Yeah. And, um, (laughs) <laughs> it's 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 always all about that no better do better right so yeah. like yeah <laughs> you're fine I've done things that as a dietitian that I'm like oh that's a little bit cringe um yes but that's also part that that's I don't know if, also for the viewers if you're not aware of this there was a lot of just like any other health profession right like you have doctors um, who are very different from other doctors, right? Like you have people on one side of the spectrum, like mm-hmm. Dr. Oz and, you know, different mm-hmm. people, they don't all get along together. They don't all have the same kind of views on everything, even mm-hmm. <laughs> with uh, what we have in resource. And so dietitians, it, there's a lot of kind of, I don't want to say drama in the community, but sometimes there can be some yes. drama in the community, but there's a lot of, uh, and this comes up, I feel like every few months of in several of the dietitian groups, even on Facebook, how they'll be like, I feel like I can't talk about weight loss and I want to talk about weight loss because the anti-diet dietitians like come and attack. And mm-hmm. then at the same time, you have the anti-diet dietitians and they're like, I don't want to talk about weight loss and everything. And then you have the other people like saying that they're just like, woo and everything. And so, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, dietitians are not a monolith. (laughs) Um, and as I was mentioning previously, the area of focus has, you know, that that's part of it, but then also it's just, um, intuitive eating is not something that until recently and, and health at every size and just kind of the movement behind it and the politics behind it and everything that wasn't, taught in uh school or in it wasn't one of the like the required things in the residency part the internship part um Mm -hmm. and so that's why there seems maybe from the outside it seems like all dietitians would say the same thing but sometimes there can be i mean for example like there's multiple dietitians in beachbody and other um, companies Arbon as well. I've had some dietitians even comment on my thing saying like i'm successful at Arbon. i'm also a dietitian like Mm -hmm. Have you had any kind of, other than just feeling a little bit like, oh, I posted something like that or anything, have you missed any part of being part of the the beach body, like community, that kind of aspect of things? Yeah, I mean, there was, um, you know, a camaraderie there. I mean, it's it's changed a lot because with, you know, COVID now, like they don't have the um, live events that, that they were having, you know, they have quarterly live events that are local, like in different areas. And Would so, you go to those? Yes. And, okay. and I, and I, and I enjoyed them. I mean, I was always somebody who never liked to do group fitness in a gym. Like when I went to the gym, I just did the treadmill and did my own thing. And I, I cause I felt like I was too uncoordinated and whatever. And even that was my one, when, when, you know, somebody said, oh, you know, about doing workouts at home. I was like, but I'm so uncoordinated. I don't think I can keep up, but it was like, oh, but you're at home. Nobody's going to see. And then I was comfortable with that. And, you know, and, and, and I've 
since I, my coordination has improved, I felt like I did benefit from the workouts. You know, going to these live events, there's like that energy. It was like a concert, you know, like I like going yeah. to and actually I went to two of the um the summits, the, the, okay. the mm-hmm. you know, and I went um as a guest because I didn't qualify for, you know, like mm-hmm. they have like different perks that people get. There was a uh they had a Billy Idol concert that was an exclusive Billy Idol concert. I'm like an eighties like person you know so uh, it was pretty it was pretty awesome and he was i mean I, I i had no expectation i'm like well he's old how could how good could he be he was really good. Was good but apparently tony horton was his trainer so that's how they got him you know like Is that so, a super trainer yes okay. yeah the guy that did p90x oh okay i got you anymore, but yeah he was like an old school like one of the original super trainers gotcha and, you know, so he was his personal client so he was able to get him and you know and they, i mean it's like cool like you go see that you know like live and and like yeah. you know so like things like that i do miss you know and and just mm-hmm. like when I, I guess I'd like kind of just having that hope that you think that maybe this will work, maybe this is the answer, I can help people and also do this. And like, you know, mm-hmm. um, I still have friends that are really like pushing, like to try to like make this into, you know, they've left their full-time jobs and whatever, but I just don't see it as a, as a option. I, you know, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't see how it could really work out in the long run, you know, yeah. just what Same I know now, like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I think actually there's so much negative that's come out of, of COVID and surrounding it, but I think a positive is that being able to step away from those more consistent in-person events and not mm-hmm. having that same kind of energy around, um, like that hype <laughs> music and everything yeah. and kind of, it, it's, it's almost like, it's very that that's the part where I'm like those things when everybody is like chanting and like doing mm-hmm. all these things it just feels kind of culty and yeah. it feels weird um and I feel like that when when you continue to do that maybe like not having that option it kind of helps your brain to kind of st- get out of that kind of mindset mm-hmm. and be like oh <laughs> yeah I definitely think that did play a part you know yeah I not having that, that. Yeah, it's like that constant, you know, mm-hmm. and because uh, that's what they serve is to like pump everybody up to keep mm-hmm. them as distributors mm-hmm. or as customers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. So one mm-hmm. good positive <laughs> out of COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It, it did kind of help me break out of some of my own like insecurities and like in the beginning because I was, you know, one year postpartum when I started this journey and like sharing before and afters I had connected with a lot of new moms too and like I really don't feel like I was being a predator because I never really sold to any of them I think a lot of them were were savvy enough to realize what and and there was it works that you know our little group there was somebody doing our bonds somebody doing it works it was all like you know there was a whole bunch of that and you know the people that did it did it and the people that knew better just stayed away or just said that's nice you know Mm -hmm. but it helped it did help me like connect with people in a way because like I felt like more that confidence I had a little bit more confidence and and I did and I I have a good core group of local moms now a few of them that have been in the challenge groups and say oh I like the workouts or whatever they did a lot of them had they had the, right. the DVDs it, like they never bought anything for me, you know, but w- it was like something we could talk about, you know, like, oh, I had those DVDs. I, I might as well just pull them out and do it with you, you know, like, yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> if somebody is kind of in your shoes, especially with your background and is in Beachbody um, or another company, like what would you tell them if they're just now kind of coming and like, questioning really what's going on behind the scenes and everything i guess what what was really eye-opening to me was just the fact that there's always going to be the next thing you know like you find something like like say to be and think all right this is good and this is sustainable and this is but they're always going to add something to it you know it's like then they're going to have a they're going to come out with the drink that you have to have you know um they're going to have you know i guess they're going to do this bike thing now. Like that was something where I'm just like, you know, it's like, am I going to have to, I, I have a tiny apartment, you know, like I'm, that's not, you know, we can't do that. And, you know, like just the fact that 
it, it, they're all, it's always looking for the next sell, you know, like it, it's not like something where it's like, all right, this is my business and, 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 and this is what we do. And we, and we, and we, we kind of cultivate this and we, when we build on this, it's always going to be like the next catchy thing, you know, like, I don't know if that makes sense, but that, that's kind of how I, that's kind of how I, like, I just feel like, and then what else are they going to put out? And then it's like, all right, we're doing this monthly thing now. And I don't know how well that's actually going because people have the option to opt out. And I'm sure many are, you know, the first month is free and then you can opt out. So when that's not selling then what's, what other monthly like thing can they get you to subscribe to, you know, like, and that you're going to have to, if you want to make this into a business that you're going to have to, pitch to people and if you're going to pitch it to them then you have to be on it yourself you can't tell them sign up for this monthly thing and you're not doing it so there's another expense uh, to you to you you know i mean i'm afraid to even look and say how much did i ended up really sp spending like they send you like an end of the year statement and my average was like i think 1200 a year of what i made I know I spent way more than that. Yes. <laughs> you know, knowing what the prices of the supplements are and things, and plus these additional like little like eight dollar fee here and right. this here and you know and, and whatever new you know every new program that came out, I was mm -hmm. signed up for the first you know dibs at it. You know, absolutely, yeah. Okay, well, I think that <laughs> is really great advice just to think about what are they having you purchase every month and. Yeah. Are you sorry? I always know they're so innovative and they're keeping up. They're innovative and they're keeping up with like the time, but it's it, now I see what it what it's really for. You know, yeah. Just, we don't need that for health. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the whole goal of nutrition coaching is to get the tools, help build the tools and the skills, and then let them fly, fly free. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Yeah about it. Cause I think it's really important. And I think that there are a lot of health professionals in these companies who are no, no longer like actively working in the companies and who are embarrassed, who are ashamed yeah. about being part of that. And I think the more that the anti MLM movement comes to fruition and comes and continues working. Um, it's already way in fruition, but c continues working. I feel like we're going to be hearing a lot more uh, health professionals talk about their experience. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. Yes. Awesome. All right. So <laughs> we just stopped recording, but she yeah. had she remembered <laughs> something. She remembered something. Yeah. So I was in like one of the um, ultimate portion fix monthly. Facebook group, like the exclusive access group that you have for paying into that membership. Mm -hmm. um, and somebody had shared a picture of that Cosmo UK, um, this is healthy with um, plus size, you know, fitness um, professionals that, that, you know, yeah. and somebody was like, so what do we think about this? You know, and, and a lot of, a lot of the posts like commenting were like very positive saying that's so awesome. That's amazing. They look great. You know, I love that they had this. And um, then it, apparently I missed the whole thread, but it started getting like back and forth, like, you know, and so Autumn came on and did like a live, like to say about her take on it. And I thought she was going to kind of just say, you know, against the people who were like deriding these women. Yeah. But instead, she said, well, is this healthy? You know, I mean, if you look at them, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but a medical term, she kept throwing around medical terms like obese and overweight are medical terms. And I could tell by looking at them that they'd be qualified as morbidly obese and all this. And so it's not healthy and all this stuff. So I was just like, wow. And then like, I'm reading. That wasn't the point of the article. <laughs> like, did she actually? And then too, she said, well, I never, I didn't even see the original thread. It was brought to my attention and I didn't read this article, but I see the of pictures course. and they're making a judgment based on, you know, basically not saying that, but that's what she was saying. And people were writing comments. And like, I was very encouraged to see the comments that people were writing saying that, this is, you know, body shaming and I look like these women. So are you saying this about me? You know, like, or, you know, I, I mean, this is inspiring and like all these things. And I even commented on it and I said, look, where I am right now, I had just run a half marathon. I was working out five to six days a week. I saw a new primary care doctor that had become recommended. And um, she just looked at the chart and said, oh, you're an overweight category. 
by like one number on the BMI or whatever. So she's like, so you just need to eat less and exercise more. And I'm like, did you just hear what I said? Like, there's no way I'm doing that. I, I, I do plenty. Thank you. Like, you know, but like, so it's like, you're just looking at this medical terminology, which is so questionable now, like that I, I've done that work on where the BMI originated and all this stuff, you know, like oh, yeah. she just came on there and just, and, and, and then what they did was then they just um, stopped you know, because a lot of people commented against that and saying that this is wrong, this is body shaming, and like, you know, how can you Not say this? Not the point of the article. <laughs> they they blocked commenting, and she never like. I said I'm gonna wait. I told my friend I'm like I posted this. I said I'm gonna wait to see if there's a re if she comes back and like says no, I understand, and I read the comment. It never happened. They blocked further commenting. They shut down the thread, and I said, all right, I'm out. And that was <laughs> that was kind of what did. I would it. love to see a recording of Autumn talk about that about yeah. that article that she did not read. I know, and oh. I'm like, and I, I unjoined that group. I bet you, I can, I could probably still get back in it and, and, and see if I if I can get it because it was like unbelievable. Oh, and, that's you not know, surprising. Yeah, but that and then and now she's doing that in her public um, social media too. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that, was, that was a big wake up call to me, just that, that this was what they were putting out. And especially when people who were sharing in that thread saying that this is what I look like, you know, and like, you know, is this, is this what Beach Body's opinion is of me? You know, like, it's kind of like, yeah, it, I saw so many people talk about that article, even another like controversial people on, on YouTube, like, yeah, Paul and Morgan, they're talking about that. And they literally did not what they were talking about was not what the article was talking about and so it's right. just so frustrating right. when, you, when you see that but yeah yeah well I, <laughs> i'm not glad that that happened but i'm glad that you were able to see that happening and have yes. it be like okay <laughs> time to go yeah yeah all right well <laughs> all right well thank you so much for sharing that all right so thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far i appreciate it so much if you like this video please consider leaving a like and if you're not subscribed consider doing that as well i'd love to hear your thoughts about this video and just melissa's story and if you related to it in any way or if you learned something that's it all right i'll see you next time <laughs> bye